A Force hey, County hey, hey, hey. Roadshow. We're so excited to see you guys. Yes. I am Miss Pam Demick. Choo. Hi, and I am Miss Rona Virus. <coughs> Excuse me. And we will be your teachers for the next couple of weeks hey, here. Hey, 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 oh, hey, yes. hey, 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 we have a special student. Hey, hey, my name's Eliza Flamingo. Hi, Eliza. Eliza's going to be joining us, and we're so excited to have her. Okay, so we have an exciting program planned for you tonight. We're going to review some math skills and some reading skills. I know it's 6 o'clock in the afternoon and teenagers just probably woke up. So thanks for oh. spending your morning with us. <laughs> Let's get started. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you tonight. So, um, I guess maybe if you just woke up, maybe you watched uh, the 6 o'clock news perhaps. Uh, 6 o'clock p.m. But anyway, if you watch the news at all, then you probably saw some numbers. We live in a world that is filled with numbers. So, you might have seen the numbers about the, uh, the, the pandemic and the, the rise in the numbers or the decrease in the cases. Or maybe just some good news about perhaps um, the stock market, maybe. Anyway, all of those things are called statistics. So that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at some statistical data. Okay? <coughs> oh, you're back. Oh, um, you oh, should okay. have at your table or in your um, in your little packet um, some paper and a pencil and a calculator. If you would, would you get those things um, um, out on your table if you don't already have those for me, please? Okay, so we're going to look at Miss Flamingo's grades in her algebra class. So, right now, um, she's got a 94, 85, 98, a 79, and another 79. So, we're going to use what we just talked about in that video, and we're going to see if we can... Um, can find the mean and the median and the mode for this statistical data. All right? Okay, so Ms. Lajah, I need you to help me now. Do you know how what the mean is? Can you tell me what mean is? Um, let me think. Let me think. I was dancing. Let me You think. were dancing. You dancing. got this. You got um, this. The mean is the average. Very good. Very good, Ms. Lajah. Okay? So, uh, can you tell me how to find average? Um, yes, you add all your numbers up. Very good. So, um, guys out there with your calculators, if you would, let's find the sum. Remember, sum means to add. So, get that little handy calculator, and if you would, add up Miss Flamingo's grades for me. Everybody got that? Okay, can someone tell us? Tell me loud because I'm kind of far away. It's going to take me a second to hear you. Can somebody tell me kind of loudly uh, what is the sum of her grades? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. I think that you're right. 435. Very good. That's what I got also when I added her grades. Okay, so what's next, Flamingo? After we add them all up, does this mean your average is 435? Ooh, that would be a nice average. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, what now? Uh, I think you have to divide by the amount of numbers you added. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five grades. So we're going to take the number 435, 435, and we're going to divide by five. And if you would, do that on your calculator for me. And hopefully we all got 87. So, good job. A B. A B. Good job. Good job. So, um, Elijah's doing really well in her algebra class. Okay? Does anyone have a question with that, about that? Did anyone not get that? Perfect. Okay, so after we have found the mean, I'm going to make us a little note right here. Now let's find the median. Oh, 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 I know what that is. Oh, you sound excited about that one. I you? am. Tell me what you know. Tell me okay, what you know. Okay, okay, okay. So when my brother was taking his driving test, um, he kept driving in the median of the road. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? What's 
comedian be in the middle? I, I'm super sorry about y your brother, but okay. So if we take our data, I need to make sure that when I'm finding the median, I am looking for the middle, but I have to list them in numerical order. So let's see. We're going to write 79 and then the other 79. And what will be my next value? Yeah, say it a little bit louder. I almost heard you. Yeah, good. 85. And then 94. And 98. Perfect. Okay? Now, I'm going to change colors over here for a sec. Now, sometimes uh, it, it's easy to, to spot the middle, but um, with five numbers, that's not too bad. But if we had like a really long set of data or we had a whole bunch of grades, it might be helpful to mark them off of the ends. Well, I thought we changed the color. Let's try again. So I'll take one off this end and off the other end. And if I strike one here, I strike another there. And so we have 85 is the median. Very good. I'll make this a note. Okay? All right, so remember the, um, the, the video and the little dance a minute, a minute ago? It said, the mode is the one that the most, very good, occurs the most often. Very good. So, when we look at the data, Flamingo, you tell me, what, what would be the mode from your grades? Well, I'm very sad about that because it's a 79. Well, that's okay, but you're exactly correct. Very good. So, our mode is 79. Very good. You did extremely well. Um, what about guys out there at North Forest? Are you guys okay? Are there any questions? Anybody have a question at all? Perfect. Okay, then I, I, I'm getting the, the feeling from the teachers that you guys found that kind of easy. So let's step it up a little bit. So let's look at a chart with some information. So the problem says that this chart shows the number of snow cones eaten by Billy and Travis. Now, first thing I want us to do is let's just review how to read a chart. All right, so just for practice, tell me um, how many snow cones did Travis eat um, in week two? I bet we have enough fingers for that. Hold up your fingers if you know the answer. How many snow cones did Travis eat in week two? Good job. Very good. So we look under Travis and week two, and so we see that Travis ate four snow cones the second week. Good job. Very good. Okay, so I just wanted to review finding your information from a chart. Make sure we were good with that. Okay? Now back to what we're really talking about here. So let's see if we can find the mean number of snow cones eaten by these guys. All right, so um, Elijah, can you tell me again when I'm finding the mean? What, what's an, uh, another word for, uh, for mean? What am I doing when I'm finding the mean? You're finding the average. Very good. Okay? So guys out there, I'm going to let you give this one a try. I'll give you a little hint or a reminder that when you're finding the average, First, you have to add your values, find the sum of your values, got your calculator, all right, did, did we all get 18? Pretty good with that. So I added 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3. That's and a lot that, of snow cones. That is a lot of snow cones for just two little guys. I agree. Ooh. Now I have to divide. What number am I going to divide by? Who, who can tell me? Elijah, do you know what number I'm going to divide by? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Very good. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. Good job. Raise your hand out there if you got that one correct. Oh, I saw a hand go up. Good. Very, very good. Okay. So, um, what about median? Now, remember 
This is Elijah's favorite because and what does her brother exactly? Now remember, um, I can't just like go find in the middle any old way I want. I have to list my data in order. Okay, so um, let's see. We've got one that would be our smallest value, and then two. Then we have three, and three, and four, and five. Okay, and so um. Yes, no, thumbs up. I see 
see thumbs. Thumbs down. I don't think it's two to you guys. They're still sleeping. It's the morning time. I know. Remember that before we find the median, we must list our numbers in order. Okay? So it's not two just because it's in the middle here. Okay? So let's see. We should have written zero. That's the smallest number. I'm going to mark them out so I make sure I don't miss one. And then the two. And then we have four and five. Her eyes were fireflies. 
Were her eyes actually fireflies? No. Can't no. Be. That just means what? Means that they look like fireflies. They're pretty. They're pretty. Yes, they're sparkly. They look like fireflies. Okay? Her smile lit up the room. That's also a metaphor. It just means she made her eyes brighten their day, right? It didn't actually right. light it like light bulbs. And can't light swallow it. No. light bulbs. No light bulbs to swallow. No, no, no. Okay, so let's look at this excerpt here from the poem Dreams by Langston Hughes. And I'm going to read it, Eliza, okay? And then I want you to tell me what you think it means by using metaphors. What do you think the metaphors mean? So you guys listen, okay? I'm thinking. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. So think just for a minute. What do you think that means? I'm going to let you think for just a minute. Okay, Eliza, so what do you think this life is a broken-winged bird? What does that mean well, if it cannot fly? I think if we don't. Think about dreams and have dreams, then we can't soar in life and become like a bird that could, that's flying without without a broken wing. Yeah. So if you don't hold fast to your dreams and go for it, what happens? You can't make your dreams come. They true. don't come true, and then they die. So it would be like a broke a bird that's broken and he can't fly. So your dreams can't fly and take off, right? Right. Good job. Do you see how that metaphor helped us think and picture it in our brain better? Okay. All right, so you should have a packet that has this poem, Litany, in it by Billy Collins. And we're going to read this poem, and you should also have a highlighter. So I'm going to give you just a second. Okay, all right, guys. So we're going to read this, this poem, and I want you to take your highlighter. And as I'm reading it, highlight some metaphors maybe that you see or something that, really, that stick out to you. Um, before we start, though, we're going to talk about what litany means, because that's a new word some of you might not know. That is a list. Okay, so this the Billy Collins, who is the author, he's making a list, and this is actually supposed to be a funny poem, um, of things that he loves or doesn't love about his, it could be his girlfriend, his wife, his best friend, we don't know who he wrote it about, but he's making a list of desirable and undesirable things. And also, before we start, um, the first two lines, I'm going to teach you a new vocabulary word, it's called an eptograph, okay? That is, somebody took, he took two lines from another poet's po poem and started his poetry with those two lines. So he borrowed somebody else's lines and then created his own poetry. So that's something you could be thinking about when we're reading this. If you see a metaphor that you really think is interesting and you think you can build upon that, you can write your own poem also from, hit two lines from Billy Collins' poem. Okay, guys? So he uses a lot of imagery and metaphors in this, po this poem. So I want y'all to listen as we go and highlight as we go, okay? Here we go. You are the bread and the knife, the crystal goblet and the wine. You are the dew on the morning grass and the burning wheel of the sun. You are the white apron of the baker and the marsh bird suddenly in flight. However, you are not the wind in the orchard, the plums on the counter, or the house of cards. And you are certainly not the pine-scented air. There is just no way that you are the pine-scented air. It is possible that you are the fish under the bridge, maybe even the pigeon on the general's head. But you are not even close to being the field of cornflowers at dusk. And a quick look in the mirror will show that you are neither the boots in the corner, nor the boat asleep in its boathouse. It might interest you to know, speaking of the plentiful imagery of the world, that I am the sound of rain on the roof. I also happen to be the shooting star, the evening paper blowing down an alley, and the basket of chestnuts on the kitchen table. I am also the moon in the trees and the blind woman's teacup. But don't worry, I'm not the bread in the knife. You are still the bread in the knife. You will always be the bread in the knife, not to mention the crystal goblet, and somehow the wine. Okay, so do you have some metaphors highlighted out there? Thumbs up. Did you catch some metaphors, Eliza? Oh, I found so many. There were so many. We're so going to talk many. about some of those. So let's look at stanza one. Okay? He says, I'm going to point one out that I think is a good one. You are the white apron of the baker. Does a baker need an apron? Why, yes. Yes, why does he need an apron? That helps him keep clean, and he uses it as a tool. Yes, yeah, so that's an important thing. So he's saying good things about his loved one, right? He cares about her. He cares about her. He does. Okay, so let's go to the second stanza, guys. 
he says some other things. He, he compares her to things that she is not. So he says, you are not the plums on the counter. Why would he say that? Because plums can go bad, but she's not bad. She's plums. a good helper for him. Yes, plums can go bad if you leave them on the counter. They go rotten. So he is saying you are not rotten. Okay? That's what I get from it. You might get something else, and that's okay. Um, or you are not the house of cards. What happens to houses of cards, guys, sometimes when you're building them? Have you ever built one? They fall. They're not stable. So he is saying she is not a stable I mean, she is not not stable. She is she is stable and happy and good, right? Right, Eliza? I think so. Okay. All right. Then he goes to say, you are in, stanza, in the fourth stanza, that a uh, quick mirror, uh, look in the mirror will show you're not the boots in the corner or the boat asleep in the boathouse. I don't want to be the boots in the corner. No, because what happens to boots in the corner? They forget about them. They're not needed. They don't, they're not necessary. Yeah, so why is he saying she's not that? Because she's important. She's very important to him. So he, she's not something you just leave in the corner to be forgotten about, right? Or the right. boathouse parked. He wants to have a boat that's parked in a boathouse, right? We want to use no, it. No, we want to use it and take it out and have fun with it. All right. Good job, Eliza. Okay. On the next, this next stanza. Now, he starts talking about himself now. He thinks highly of himself, I think. Did y'all catch that? When we were reading, he switched from you to I. So then he starts talking about... I am the shooting star. Do you know what that is when two words are start with the same letter? I, I've heard of it. Um, Does anybody know? Ooh, I like shooting and star. They both say the same stuff. Oh, it's, uh, is it called alliteration? It is called alliteration. Ooh, and he like uses my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and he uses that. He also says he's the rain on the roof, which is also alliteration also. And rain on the roof is a nice, pleasant sound, right? So he's saying he is a pleasant person. He is just shooting a star. We like to look at shooting stars. Yes. Yes. Okay. He is also the basket of chestnuts on the kitchen table. Why do you think he, he was saying he was that? Compare himself to that. I don't know. Why? What happens when you're around food sometimes and you just see it? You like to eat it. People like nuts on the tables, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's just thinking he's very useful, okay? So he has a high opinion of himself, I think. Little, little bit. Little bit of high opinion. He taught, he's the moon and the trees. But then he ends it again with the same two lines. But you are still the bread and the knife. And you will always be the bread and the knife. And bread is important to us. I take it like he's saying, like the bread of life, you're important. You help me. You're there for me all the time. She makes him better. She completes him, right? She makes him complete. So he is saying, you will always be that. I am not the bread and the knife. Or the crystal goblet and the wine. He and the, needs her. He needs her. That's what I think. So, you guys, if you want to take two, two, I would love for you to write your own poetry from two lines or your favorite metaphor from here and bring it next week and give it to your teachers because I would love to read it. I do, you, do we get prizes? Maybe. Maybe I'll give you something if you bring something. Ooh, okay. That would I, be I, awesome. I will do it. You will do it. Okay. All right. So, we discussed this. And you might get something. Reading is so subjective, guys, as long as you can... Support your opinion on what, why you think something means something. It's okay to have a different opinion than somebody else, even the teacher sometimes, right? Think, think, think. Think, 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 yes, because it has deep meaning, and he used a lot of figurative language to help us picture those things in our mind. And that helps us have better imagination. Yes, it does. So I want you, what is the difference between a metaphor and a simile, Eliza? Well, I think that a metaphor compares two things by saying one thing is another thing. Yes, and then how does similes compare? Similes usually use words like like and um, as yes. whenever, they're, whenever they're comparing. Yes, they say like or as, so you can remember that now, okay? And guys, I want you to circle your favorite metaphor in the poem. If you were to write something and expand upon it, which one would you use? Do you have a favorite one? I like the one about the bread and the knife, because I, I like love bread. Bread. bread is so yummy. And I like, I like the apron and the baker, because I like to bake cookies. Yes. Like, oh, bring me a cookie next week. I will bring you. I'll okay. maybe I'll bring you a cookie. Okay, before we do our move to learn, Miss um, Rona Virus has a little announcement to make. And I'm so glad you guys came tonight. We're so excited to have you guys. Thank y'all for coming out. I have my listening ears. Okay, listen. Let's listen to our let's listen to our announcement. Okay, because you did such a fabulous job, we're gonna have a, a little um a little activity uh, where we're gonna get to move around a little bit. But there's a catch. No calculators. Okay? This is 100% random. 
Rainbower! Alright? Okay, you can tell them about it, so okay. let me say that. Okay. So, I just need y'all to stand up. Stand up. Get your little wiggles oh. out. Stand up. You know, this is kind of like, you know, that uh, we played uh, Fat Dash and y'all loved it yes. during the year. And you were all excited about those multiplication facts. This is kind of like that. So, some of these slides are going to have a simile or metaphor, and you're going to have to say which it is, or a multiplication fact. Because Miss Miss Ronavirus said that was y'all's favorite. Yes, <laughs> math is everybody's favorite. We have. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> okay, so simile or metaphor. Who's the first person? Let's see. Life is like a box of chocolate. Good job. Okay, next one. All right, no calculators. Nine, nine times nine, nine, nine is. Oh, thumbs up. Good job. Good job. 81. Good job. All right. His cotton candy words did not appeal to her taste. Simile or metaphor? All right. Got a winner. Ding, ding, ding. Good job. <laughs> His solution is like a band-aid for the problem. Like a band-aid. Simile. <laughs> Don't tell him the answers. Okay, seven times eight. Seven times eight is not 49. Come on. <laughs> All right. Good job, 56. Whoop. Five oh, times seven. Easy. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. <laughs> Next, a similar metaphor, all the world's a stage. I feel like that right now. Do we have a winner? Thumb up. Oh, there we go. Good All job. right. The next one. This is the classroom is like a zoo. In there. I know you teachers can come. You can relate to that. In there. Similar metaphor. We got a thumbs up. Okay. Very good. Very good. Oh, math. Seven times six. There we go. Seven times six is. Yes! Good job. We got it? Okay. No calculators. <laughs> five times eight. Oh, five, ten. <laughs> good job. Good job. Up. All right. A place to be on Tuesday night. Have a good week.